certainly not leaning on it. Uh, he has picked up a couple of times this season, but I think the pick makes sense here. Uh, gives you a lot of fall through in those longer fights, and Phone Freaks are opting to go for the Kaiser and Altus, a really strong duo. Put that Rel in the jungle, so a lot of lockdown. And, you know, as much as Zareth is very much a sit back, play defensive champion, his ult gains so much power on this patch. The way it works now is you get more shots than you used to, and also, for what? <laughs> I feel like there was one person that was, you know, trying to make up for the little bit of a deficit, you know. Maybe the bull mom? Maybe it was. Maybe yep. it was bull mom. You know, rarely we get to appreciate Zara skins. Because rarely we get to see them, but that is yeah. like the astronaut one looks pretty cool. Uh, sure, Ox. Really wants to win this lane as now we got a gang coming in as Guma is going forward. Always has the wall to dash away from. Carrier though doesn't really have a friend to dash towards as it will be just Carrier losing his flash. Nice gank down on the bottom side, but Taeyun did have to use his as well. Yeah, and honestly, Taeyun's flash being been Zareth, so I could definitely see both sides. We'll see where he does go in as Dudu, speaking of which, is going into this fight. Zeus in a little bit of trouble, does go for the World Ender, still holding on to the flash. And he will have to use it here towards the end of the tree. Yeah, and Juju playing that really well now. G1 starting up this Hextech Dragon, but with uh, uh, Quantum Freak's jungle on the top. Yeah, I I think... Oh, Juju looking again for heavy trade. Yeah, the root going to miss as well. It hits the Q3, but Dudu still... Uh, ambling forward. Here is Owner going to flash onto the right side of this one. It's doing a bit of trouble, but a very nice Magnet Storm trying to save his top laner. Is Young Jay with the flash? Easily comes Ooh. in. Owner picks up first blood. And now Young Jay is just on the run. He's not going to be able to get away from this route either, as you know, pretty tanky with the bombies, but still the advance comes in, and that is a kill given over to the Aatrox. A perfect timing for Owner to turn up. Mid. Uh, we do have the Drake in a minute and a half, so not exactly. The timing for that, but I guess it's probably close to time now as well. Uh, Drake and Harold are taking at the same time, right? So you real for him, he's trying to you know be very proactive at this rel, and it does have so no much tank potential going in now. He's got the Zareth as well. Look at that extra damage coming in from the ult, and it takes three people, but they take out the. Wonder Freaks is not interested in contesting it, and we actually see Zares go for a bit of a proxy farm to deny Dudu's push there. Yeah. And you know why they're not contesting it? Because instead of one silly like? with, with Faker back in here, it has we haven't had a real team fight just yet. So not ready to make a full judgment uh, now. But let's see how this one is going to go. As we do have the teleport coming in here from Faker. We do have Quantum Fiends trying to make a stand here. But again, this Maokai ultimate is just so strong. The stun goes in on a Faker. Now he's going to be caught up. Two members in the front line there by the Rel, but the damage follow-up is not there. And Taeyun, Arjun of five people, gets the kill. And now Zayu says, hey, look at me. It's I'm Aatrox. I'm back here in map, or the first map here, as he is doing so much. Young Jay is going to be taken out as well. The Aatrox and the Zeri just do way too much in this first fight. And it was actually such a beautiful catch onto Faker for Quandorm Freaks. And... He ends up going down, but so much is committed to make him go down. So many ultimates, Taeyun ulting in, have to burn both summoners to get away on a slip. Oh, uh, it does look like Taeyun has taken the brunt of it here <laughs> in the beginning of this, as he is barely going to avoid that accelerated chunk blast. As there you go, second Rift Herald. This is the power of it. It allows you many times to pick up this third tree. And a big problem is if T1 get on the objective like they are now. Uh, Anil, you're not allowed to be there. Okay. Blast uh, cone, thankfully, is going to save us from any action. I yeah. hate action. Oh, yeah. Really bad, yeah. Quantum Freaks, I don't think you can fight this. They're going to give it a go. Fake is getting... Oh, oh yeah, boy. it's over. You can't. Leave, leave, <laughs> leave, leave. <laughs> Gets a huge cheer from the crowd. This Faker's doing damage. And, yeah, they're just going to leave. Uh, uh -oh. Definitely the right call here. Okay. Andal definitely uh, shouldn't be here. Um, yeah, he doesn't have a Blast Cone in that lane. He's just going to hook away and get to safety. One for the Herald down mid. Oh, they're looking for Faker here. Yeah, this is welcome uh, back. Faker he is going to be <laughs> welcome back. Um, it's a lot of our damage, and he's nearly taken out entirely by that. But we do have the follow up from T1 trying to save him as Bulldog uh, will not go lives. down actually. Lives just barely under that turret. Well, oh, maybe we no. spoke too early as Guma 
just going to... Oh! Uh, oh. Never mind. He's going to hit him with the backside of that W, it looks like. That looks uh, weird. And now Andil is going to go down. So Dudu, meanwhile, uh, had teleported to the bottom lane, and Tain was mid the entire time. Yeah, make the call. You know what? We don't even want Baron. Let's just go bot, get a tower, mid, get a tower. Baron Smarin! <laughs> You know, I think that's an exact quote of what he would have said yeah. in comms. Um, and at least they're trading something for that play, but still a devastating hit uh, towards Gondor and Creek's chances in this game. With T1 getting that fight and the Baron, it's, <laughs> it's definitely not crowd control. Yeah, no. Well, uh, speaking of which, they are just going to try to burst down Faker here. Gets incredibly low as the Zareth ultimate will be layered, but not quite hitting the target somehow. Owner gets back in there. Young Jay in a bit of trouble. And Aatrox is here, and he will take over this game whether you like it or not, as will the Zeri as they just shred through everybody. T1 way too far ahead. That is the ace, and it might just be the game at this point. With the Baron buff, they're going to try to push into this bottom lane. Yeah, I mean, it looks like the game plan of Quandor and Freaks is kill Faker, and then they achieve that goal, and they're like, okay, where do we go from here? <laughs> um, they didn't think they'd get this far, and T1, the rest of the team, just absolutely decimate them in return. Yeah, and... Don't uh, they can do. I, I think... Uh, some close health bars, but they're, or death timers rather, they're still gonna go for it. We got a TP in here, 23 and a half minutes, and with Baron Bob, T1 have enough to push into the base and take game one in dominating fashion. Yeah, I mean, there was a couple of moments. Uh, so, favoring a better matchup in the bot lane, uh, in return for putting the Realm into the jungle, which, I mean, I don't think Realm in the jungle was really the issue with last game. I don't know, I don't think there was... Well, I don't think draft was really the issue. <laughs> <laughs> Not Although really. No. Maybe that first pick T1 we're able to have. Top like of the rip for game number two. <laughs> I that really hope, goes hard. I hope that is Bull Mom, actually. Because <laughs> if it's not, I mean, I don't know. A lot of passion. You know what? Any Quantum Freak fans watching, that's what you have to live up to. That's the standard that has been set. Um, and it's pretty high. It's a pretty high bar. Oh, Bulldog, I think he landed the initial skill shot. Yeah, got that little, little bit of fair strike goal. All right, let's go to game three. Money in the bank. I'm pretty sure he went Comet last game. How much first strike goal do you think he got? Uh, really hard. Yeah. Uh, not the best engage. Oh, oh okay, Carrier gonna get Taeyun back in. That camera work was also pristine. Taeyun in a lot of trouble. Used both summoners and still was not able to get away. As now owner looking for one more twisted advance. Probably will have enough, but the pulverize is enough. Carrier does take a third shot, but it doesn't matter. It's two kills for the T1 bottom side of the map. When in fact, owner picked up both kills. Age and the fact that Taeyun and Andal were on top of each other means you get the double pulverize. Oh, Faker went uh, in 1v2. Yeah, I'm trying to make a statement. This is, this this game, is the last game. This oh, game. We'll do that. And here comes Carrie, and now he's level 6 with Moby Boots. So he is ready to party. He is. Oh, he's going for the big flank. He is so fast, like, he could just sprint at them in the top side. So you know uh, what? Young Jay and Dude, they just walk away. They're like, well, hey, look, I'm in a this position to take the straight Kwangnam Freaks from here. Oh, oh, no. oh, no. Oh, here we go. The nature's grasp as Dudu doesn't even uh, find a way out of that one. Doesn't even elect a flash until he gets under the turret, as does do a nice combo here onto the tree, but it doesn't matter as that sword is quite long. Jay's just going to use it to cut down the crop. That box. He definitely has. And it's been. Uh, mostly free lane as another engage going to come in here onto Taeyun. Taeyun just kind of uh, shrugs that one off. Proxying waves once again as Supercharge comes in, but Gumius is still on the run. Does have to flash as Andal just make his way in with the engage Braum. Trying to set it up. And that was their one opportunity because now Kari is looking for the flank. Yeah, and Onus here as well. X flash on cooldown. He's trying to get that one back up. Owner. Biding his time, there's no vision over here for Quantum Freaks' bottom lane. As they're just going to call it off, they say, well, we can just get this Drake instead. There's no mid laner right now. Yeah, I mean, Bulldog did recall then, but I think it's kind of a good call because... Oh, okay. Well, I think diving of Rome, risky. Especially if Bulldog is in range to ult. Could very quickly go badly. So they'll just take the Dragon, satisfied with that one. 
Uh, and Youngjae not really having much been able to do uh, in the games has been put on the mid pressure. That's what you want out of this series, especially when your opponent picks Xerath. Uh, and unfortunately, is kind of losing the poke trades. Uh, the Rift Trail set this one up. Let's see if Guma sniffs this one out. He does have carry it down here for now, but not a lot of vision. Don't walk up, don't walk up, don't walk up! Yeah, there it is. Magna Storm comes down, the engage Braum is in, but unfortunately, uh, Braum is not very good at engaging, as the stun will get down onto Karia, who will sacrifice himself in trade for that. So a nice setup here by the Kwangmung Freaks. Yeah, really solid play. Oh, looking for a bit more, though. Fake has moved down, and Andal takes a lot of damage. Q-Max Braum uh, didn't many, didn't have his E available. Certainly. They are pushing for it. Yeah. Okay. Of course they are. Why do we even ask? Uh, I don't know. Well, we do know that they are setting up for this one. We do have kind of a, a broken up Quantum Freaks. That Shock Blast is going to go wide. Faker has taken a bunch of damage. That's the objective given over to T1 already. As owner, not super tanky at this point. You do see the flank from Aatrox. Zeus has a little bit of a target on Bulldog's back, but the rest of the team just going to take out owner as that one was not very clean from T1. But they do get the Rift Herald as Quantum Freaks will take down the T1 jungler. Well, let's see this. I mean, Quantum Freaks are going to be on this objective first, and they will start it up. They got Control Ward in the pit, a great setup. We do have a nice little flank angle here from Zeus, but it will be matched by Dudu, who's going to mark his target for now. With the damage already coming in from the Aatrox, the Nature's Grasp is big. They get onto the back line, and immediately the Xerath is just gone. Who could have seen this coming? As Teyu does have a nice position, but he's alone. It's a triple kill for the Kai'Sa, and Faker will pick up one. Perhaps a couple media votes on his way out, as that will be 2-1 smashing the Drake fight. They just annihilate them, and this is a problem. It's so hard to protect this Xerath, but as soon as he goes down, but like the rest of the comp uh, just crumbled around it. Taeyun didn't get a chance to ramp up and just decimate. This is the third time. <laughs> it's looking like it's going to be 0 3. Uh, Taeyun's trying to put on the pressure. Here's the Zerith gank coming in from oh the no. bottom lane. As... Run, Bulldog! Oh no. <laughs> oh, wait! <laughs> okay, he's going to flash away. He should be fine. As the Never mind, Zerith broken. Down. Zerith absolutely broken. Hey. Also, free Baron. Given over to T1, uh, although they do elect to not go for it as TPs are available from yep. Bongo Freaks. Yeah, well, I just saw Xerath kill Aatrox, therefore, Xerath over Aatrox. He's and going Rylize again. I don't Instead, know. He'll be slowing him up. Uh, here we do have the T1 Baron. It is being taken at 21 minutes. They spot Young Jay, so Nature's Grasp just uh, gets him out. It's a free Baron. Carrier gets in the back line and delivers a free Zeri over to the enemy team. That's going to be the end of him. And maybe the end of this game, guys, is into the back line. Bulldog, that's a nice little shield from Onville, but a flash will make it irrelevant, as that will be four kills over the side of T1, as they will look to push top and mid. Yeah, I mean, they managed to get the Baron. They don't do it immediately. Hey. When there's members, Grats oh, Guma. congratulations to Guma. Yeah, I mean, Kai's always a good one. Pick up multiple kills. Braum is not going to do anything. And yeah, I mean, the game is essentially over. T1 not really being tested, I feel like, in their first series with Faker back. But I think as you mentioned, a nice little, nice little win to this, you know, catapult off and kind of get some momentum. This team needs to rebuild, right? If we're going to be yeah. real in terms of like the, the confidence, the momentum. This T1's been going through a rough spot. Oh, Engage comes in. Yeah, they're trying to go for this one again, but the Maokai and the Jace uh, coming together to get some huge damage down. Guys, this one is... This is so over. <laughs> like, it's 11,000 gold right now, 23 minutes into the game. T1 looks like they're just going to end it here. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's anything that Quantum Freeze can do in this situation. Uh, the ult's going to come out. Give me see dodges like all of <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Consecutive hits not really coming in there. No, oh, and uh, neither is Dudu. He's going to go down as, uh, yep, that's going to be the end of it. Flashing on top Where of there go? <laughs> Teyu, and he just disappears as Faker will pick up another media vote on his way out. We are done here 2-0 as T1 will take down the series. And as I was saying, this...